<coughs> Carl set up. I can be as short as you like. <laughs> yeah, I just did. Um, <coughs> well, uh, when people write words which are put on the back of books and then are attacked for <coughs> defending the books, the usual response is to say, well, I don't agree with everything in the book, but um, I, I defend this man's right to write it. I've written something on the back of this book, and um, it's not so much I don't agree with everything in it. I agree with everything in it that I can understand, <laughs> but there's an awful lot that I can't, because I'm not a philosopher. Um, but I'm very impressed by the, the depth of scholarship in this book, and by Gilad's own knowledge of, of uh, philosophy. I knew he was a great Philosophist, I didn't know he was a great philosopher as well, and I think I think he is. I think some of the ideas in this book are provocative, stimulating, and profound to to pick up on an, an earlier point. Um, but what I and, and because I'm not a philosopher, I want to take a different approach to why this book is important. And I think uh, what I'd like to say is that it has a wider appeal than you might think. And what I mean by that is if you saw that, this in a bookshop and you were not interested in something called Jewish identity politics, then you might not think of buying it. But the, the ideas that are set out here and the classification of different types of Jewish identity, I think, are very important <coughs> for creating a misunderstanding of the Arab-Israeli uh, dispute and particularly of the Palestine-Israel dispute. Because if you look at what it is that is presented to uncommitted, let's say ignorant Americans or British or people in the West who don't know anything about it, every argument that is presented for the right of European Jews to own, to take over, to steal the land of the Palestinians, every one of those arguments comes from a different type of Jewish identity, and they're often contradictory. And in that sense, it's not that there's a whole weight of arguments converging on the right of Jews to have Palestine. It's that there's a whole range of different arguments, and you can pick and choose which one, but they can't all be right. You, you, you can, if you're an American Christian, you can be impressed by the idea that God gave Palestine to the Jews. Okay, that's a very strong argument if you happen to believe in God, but if you don't happen to believe in God, there's another argument from a secular Jew who believes that the Bible is a history book. Okay, and so the secular Jew will tell you, well, I don't believe in God either, but you've only got to look at the kind of continuity of the Jewish people from way back when to today to, to realize that, of course, this state is ours. Um, that continuity, as uh, Shlomo Sands has shown in the book that uh, Gilad mentions and writes about, is, is, is a fallacy. It's false. Uh, uh, and one of the interesting things about the scientific evidence for the lack of genetic continuity in Jewishness is there's only two, there are two families, two names for which you can find evidence of an association with a me Middle Eastern gene 2,000 years ago. And it's very nice to be able to say that we have one of them here today. One of those names is Rappaport. And I think uh, it may be that Irvin is the only person here who actually can claim continuity of connection with those ancient Jews. The other family is Levi. Um, and there is much less genetic evidence because there's a whole argument about the Khazars and, and how many of, of today's East European Jews could well be traced back to them rather than to the Middle East at all. But, but nevertheless, if you don't know anything about the situation, if you don't know the scientific evidence, if you haven't read Sands' book, you can believe the Jew who tells you that, oh, but we, we deserve this land because we had it meant to two and a half thousand years ago. And, and n never mind the fact, of course, that if you go beyond some of these arguments, the gift of God, or the con so-called continuity, um, these are nonsensical bases for making modern nations anyway. Um, but, but many people don't go beyond those. Many people who have not been exposed to the issue um, just accept arguments that are presented by the mass of pro-Israel, pro-Zionist material that's put out. And then finally, you have people who perhaps are not interested in God, who don't believe in God, perhaps, 
who may or may not believe that the Bible is a history book, but they're probably intelligent enough to know that it isn't. But then you have the Holocaust, of course, which is a third argument which is often brought forth, which is that after the Second World War, what could be done? All these poor people, understandably, wanted to go somewhere, and that where did they want to go? They wanted to go to Palestine, except, of course, that they didn't. Um, what happened was, for many of them, that there were Zionists touring the displaced person camps who, first of all, either encouraged or even made it difficult for them to do anything but go to Palestine. Then there were the Americans, the Canadians, other countries which closed their doors to the Jews who actually did want to go to the West or even some back to Germany. But again, these arguments are not presented, and, and for these particular Jews for whom you know, the Holocaust is a, is a focus of their lives and their memories, that's another argument that's presented. So I think if you look at why Zionism is supported, particularly by Americans, by many people in this country as well, uh, they're supported on, on the basis of arguments, but if you look at the arguments, you'll find that they come from a whole lot of different directions, each of which is associated with one or other of the types of uh, Jewish identity that Gilad has identified in his book. So I think, aside from the very interesting political and philosophical discussion, I think the question of Jewish identity is related to the question of how people understand the Israel-Palestine situation. And if the inconsistencies can be exposed by writing like the lads to the point where actually there is no such thing as a Jew other than somebody who's not defined as anything else, then it might help to break the solid wall of pro-Israeli feeling that there is uh, in the world and help some kind of solution uh, to come about that is not happening at the moment. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. So thanks very much to all the panel and uh